In 2030, schools will be digital using tablets, and I tell you, well, this is a big success. The tablets are interactive and they have to be free, otherwise it's not going to work. It's nice if you want to learn a foreign language, if the tablet shows you movies and playing uh, music. But most important is that these devices can listen to what you say, so they can make vocabulary tests and grammar tests and in 2030 they are allowed to make dialogues about stories you've just read. So the kids at school they talk with the tablet and learn foreign languages. This way the teacher has time to do small group activities with other students. But most fun is to do group activities, maybe role plays. So all these activities will happen at the same time in 2030. It's different to school in 2018. It's a problem that if you speak to a tablet, that data go to Alexa, Siri or Google. So the politicians decided to make a European Siri. It's a European speech recognition software for all the languages of the European Union, even the small ones. Doing math at the tablet is very effective. You calculate on the tablet. If you got a problem, you ask the device to give you a hint or show you a video. After you're finished, you press the button. The tablet is able to show you precisely where you've done the mistake. If you are right, don't have, didn't do any mistake, uh, you get a more complicated equation. So you get better and better. 2030 there will be nearly no tests. Uh, with a tablet you go up level by level as we know it by computer games. Uh, this tablet knows whether you are able to solve equations yes or not. So there is no need to test it. You only need tests for creative stuff. Like writing stories or making a speech. During the lesson a teacher can see in real time which student is going well and with a task and which student needs help so he can interact very quickly. Today, many people use the smart watches. They show you the heartbeat and they show you whether you've been lazy last week or whether you've done a lot of sports. It's very important for students to get the same information. Did you do 10 minutes of vocabulary training last week? Yes or not? What vocabulary are still a problem for you and what's green color, what's good? In 2030, these data are very important if you want to help a kid, because you see how he's doing at school. What are the weakness, the strengths, even what should the kid do after he's done, after he finished school. At the same times, uh, these data have to be protected very well. You cannot give them to any company because they tell a lot about you. Some families have a lot of time, so they do not need a tablet or e-learning coach or stuff like this. but. All these devices are very helpful for those kids who have to do a lot on their own. So you get a new book about every 10 years, paper book. But digital books are getting updates every year. In 2030 we need free books, so the people who write the books, the authors, get the money by the government. And while they do so, every student and every teacher is invited to help them. So the book is getting better and better. We will have an app store of education in Brussels. 80% is totally free, but you can rely that these books are certified and of good quality. We will allow some companies to sell their books there as well. So if we write a math book in Munich, the people in Berlin can just take it and change it or just use one part of it. What's new in 2030 is uh, that there are, it will be translated in Brussels in all languages of the European Union, even smaller ones. So every teacher and student in the European Union is able to use the Bavarian math book if they want to, or just a page or just a part. And if we have it in these languages, the book can be used for free nearly all over the world. And we get informations and ideas back to make the book better and better. In 2030 a used smartphone will be very cheap, so every kid has one. And they can get very good educational software from the App Store from Brussels.
So the world will not be totally fair in 2030, but it would be much more equal than it is today. We remember that kids learn best by playing, and we know that they can play for many, many hours a day. So learning games are very important for the school of 2030. And of course they have to be free as well, because not only the rich kids should have fun while learning. So in 2030 there will be a competition for learning games. If you get a good idea, you win the prize, you get a lot of money and you can pay a software engineer to actually make this learning game. In the end, it's got to be open source and totally free, so every kid in the world can use it. Every other software engineer can make the game better and better. So nowadays e-learning is sometimes very boring, hours and hours in front of the computer. So the tablet in the year 2030 is giving you different tasks. It's very important that you have group activities, activities outdoors. So we will have many kids with their tablets in the nature, the museum or in the city, many more than we have 2018. The teacher is always informed about what his kids are doing because he ha just has to look at his tablet and he knows whether they're really learning something or just play games. So in 2018, most of the time the kids do the same stuff at the same time but in 2030 it will be different they still have to do math and English um, but there is much more freedom in learning because these free activities are much easier for the school to organize you got plenty of material and you can control whether these groups are learning or not learning the tablets are not only controlling the students, but they can protect and help them. Because if the homework takes too long, the tablet can say, stop, yeah, you should go out and play. The tablet knows the weather. In the summer of 2030, if the sun is shining, the tablet tells the kids not to learn, but go out, play football, go to the lake and swim. Some people who were looking after data protection, they wanted to stop all that. No tablets at school. They didn't want uh, to send these data to go to Apple, Google, Android. Um, but that problem was solved. Uh, there's a Linux foundation and uh, we paid money for software engineers to make a simple, reliable Euro Linux and Euro Android system. So the data are still in Europe. The kids are using the Euro Linux and Euro Android in the school day and at private they can switch to Apple or Android as they wish. But most kids are a bit lazy so they do not switch and in 2030 Apple and Google are no longer dominating the internet. So the big companies want to make big money at school. They do not want free educational resources. If you think the idea is good, yeah, please thumb up and uh, or make even better ideas and of course share them. Otherwise, we are not going to have it. Thanks and sorry for my English.